Hey everybody, this is Christo Velev and today I'm going to show you a way to model, uh, pose and animate an iron chain. And as you can see by our result, it looks quite nice. I think the method is very handy. So just to overview it, um, we're going to look at the modeling of the chain first. Uh, then we're going to put a control object inside the chain. We're going to pose it along a spline. And then we're going to use that control object to animate with the closed simulation and skin wrap the chain to the control object. So it follows it. And at the end, we're just going to attach the chandelier with an attachment constraint. So we get that nice effect. Okay, so let's start with the modeling part. I'm going to just create an ellipse. Which is going to be pretty small. Since my chain link is pretty small. And I'm going to center it in the world space. And I think something like this is cool. I'm going to call it chain. And then I'm going to create my control object, which is going to be basically a box inside that chain link. But I'm going to use a plane because I need to be quite accurate. You'll see why. I'm going to slap an edit poly on top because I need to snap to the words. And then I'll get a plane and snap it right in the center. So when I have snapped it like this, I can expand it like this. That's my control object. I'm going to change its score so I can distinguish between the two. And um, now for the magical part. It's going to be done by the clone modifier. It's uh, distributed freely, freely by i2 software. That's how it's spelled. You can go check their site. You'll find lots of interesting cool stuff. Um, they have uh, three max modifiers that I find very handy. So um, I'm going to increase the number of clones here. Then I'm going to have displacement. But um, the trick here is to use this exact value. So I have my objects repeating at, at exactly the distance that's uh, the length of my control object. And I'm going to use this thing later to have a strip of cloth that is going to control my chain. And because I need a strip, I will put on a welder on top, which is going to weld my words here. So I don't have just disconnected segments and I have a single strip. But uh, the thing is that I'm going to have to introduce some rotation here, of course. So my chain links are rotated. But since I don't need the rotation on my control object, I'm going to deinstance the clone modifier and disable that rotation here. Which uh, unfortunately breaks the link, the link between the number of clones for the two objects. So I'm going to reestablish that link by wiring. I'm going to go to the clone and say link the number of clones to the number of clones. And I'm going to say the control chain controls the chain. I'm going to connect this. So now we have the link re-established, which is exactly what I need. And then at the end, I'm going to put a shell modifier on top, which is handy because the cloth plays better with something like that than just a single strip. And uh, yeah, just one last thing. When, I, when you create control objects, never forget to click off renderable in the beginning. It saves you a few busted renderers. <laughs> So that's the modeling stage. Now for the posing stage, as you can see, I've already created my spline that I'm going to use for posing my chain. It's uh, wrapping nicely around my objects, going through my holders here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select both my uh, chain and my control objects, and I'm going to apply a path deform modifier. So with the path deform modifier, I'm going to pick my spline. I'm going to do that for both. Uh, actually, yeah, it's the same modifier. I'm going to move to the path and click off the axis Z. The thing is that sometimes it happens with the pivots that as you, as you can see, this one is not at uh, the correct position. I'm just going to de-instance the modifier and then I'm going to click move to path again. So now it's okay. Now the beauty of um, this approach is that I can now dial in as much 
uh, as big number of clones as I want to and I can precisely match up my spline even when I change it I can still introduce new words or move words and stuff and I can just go here dial up the number of words and I'm gonna have my chain produced so that's for the posing okay now let's animate it so the, the only problem we have is that um, I cannot do anything with the path deform modifier I, mean, I cannot um, animate uh, these things so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to tools and I'm gonna snapshot my objects um, so I'll have a uh, mesh snapshots you'll see I have collapsed mesh he meshes here so I will I will have my you can see I have the zero one object is the is the snapshot so I'm gonna select my original objects and just hide them which is useful when you are uh, gonna t gonna be trying several setups and I'm gonna apply skin wrap modifier on my chain and I'm gonna say be controlled by the control object so now the control object is gonna be driving my chain and I'm gonna freeze it so I cannot um, select it and then I'm gonna put my cloth modifier since we are gonna be animating this with cloth and of course everything that I need to be interacting with it right now they are frozen so let's try again yes these are the objects I need to interact with I'm gonna say this, these are collision objects and uh, my chain control, uh, control object is gonna be cloth just gonna use a heavy preset and the only thing I'm gonna change is the offset here because I need um, to collide not with my with the volume of my control object but with a big bigger volume which is gonna prevent my actual chain links from interpenetrating. So I think three is gonna be okay in this case. And then I can go in and create some control groups. So this guy here I don't need to move at all. I'm gonna just hit preserve on this one and uh, I can actually preserve these ones too which is gonna make my simulation much easier and preserve this one too make group so now when I hit simulate local you're gonna see that my chain is gonna drape nicely using the preserve nodes which are kind of clunky here so I can just reset the state go into my groups again and make a new preserve I can even delete this one the good thing is that here you, you have the entire arsenal of the cloth tool which is quite extensible so right now you can see that here I fixed this issue that I was having so I have these uh, guys draping nicely and you can do this stuff uh, everywhere so you can have all kinds of different behaviors now when I have my behavior okay, okay I'm just gonna grab my chandelier which is over here it's uh, just parented to that uh, attachment node and uh, I'm gonna do something very simple I'm just gonna go to animation constraints attachment constraint and I'm gonna constrain it to my control object and it's uh, 
rotated wrong, but that's not problem actually because the attachment uh, constraint does not uh, drive the rotation, it just drives position. I'm gonna position it something like OK, and um, then I'm just gonna go into my chain object and I'm gonna hit simulate. It's gonna keep the same orientation. So one last thing I can do is go to cloth forces and push in my winds. Uh, it's just uh, the force that that was that was creating this uh, swaying motion that you were seeing before. So uh, I have this thing added, and I, when I hit simulate, you'll see that I'll have uh, the swaying motion which is created by the wind, and my chain here sways properly, and my chandelier sways properly. So. Just to recapitulate, what we did was uh, have uh, created uh, create this uh, whole chain with a with a clone modifier inside it. Uh, create a control object which is inside that chain that we are going to use for the, that we were are using for the clone simulation. Use uh, the path deform modifier to run it along a spline and uh, fix it with a uh, select number of uh, clone instances with uh, with the clone modifiers, and then uh, skin wrap our chain to our uh, control object, and then run our control object uh, with to, through a clone simulation with all the nifty details that we can create with the clone simulation, and then I just attached this guy here to my to the end piece of my cloth. Of course, you can do some uh, mo much more complex uh, interactions. You can have complex collisions, you can have um, more cloth objects that are gonna drive um, some uh, other objects, so you can have like more dynamic uh, draping and stuff. You can even have breakings uh, in the chain, like if I unfreeze my chain here, you can have um, an element in the chain that is gonna just vanish with a delete mesh modifier at some point and with the new max cloth in Max 2010, you have a very cool uh, tearing cloth feature, so you can have this thing too, so you can actually even break your chain. And there's a whole range of possibilities that's opening up for you. So I hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.